It's funny it. how you get an impulse to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, it has a, it, it can change everything. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 So that's like uh, in the moment creating. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. nice because you'll never run out of ideas. Yeah. Because you just look and just start doing. Zappa was like that in a sense. It was never. It, it, it was as if he was never not inspired. He was always, mm -hmm. always inspired. Always in, if, you, if you tell him a story, if you tell him anything, you might hear it in a song the next day, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, I also thought about his, his way of like, the, like what, uh, how Bobby Martin said, that you know, when you got to his band, that you were put under a microscope and he would like find out everything about you and how you can use it. Well, he, 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 Frank had this uh, unique, uh, well, one of his brilliances is, is his ability to, or was his ability to kind of assess your abilities better than you could. He just had this instinct into um, the potential of a musician. And then he would pull that out of you and then he would use it as a color in his palette of colors to paint his music that's why each record each project was so different like you know for instance uh, mike i've i've worked with mike you know he was in, we we toured together a lot and uh he's he's just he's a remarkable musician he has this no can not do attitude can do will do right now what do you want you know and if he if if it requires two hands in two different directions he can do that you know it's like this independence but it's just this fierce bravery you know and i know frank loved that about him plus his ears are just incredible so that takes a it might seem as though it takes courage, but no, it's just natural to him. And, and I think, you know, one of the um, similarities I see in the video that you made is that uh, finding elements to use on the spot. And, you know, that's a, that, that many people would be scared to death to do something like that. Mm. You know, that's like, so everything has to be done before we get there, you know, and that's fine. You know, that's fine for those who like to do that. But there's a certain freedom in having the confidence that I don't know, but I'm going to make it work. You know, I'm going to make it work. I don't I don't know what's going to be there, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to make it work anyway. You know, so there's a freedom. There's a real freedom in that kind of confidence because you usually the, the the way that you get there to find that confidence is having it in the past and knowing that the universe delivers you know it just delivers it delivers on your confidence and it also delivers on your lack of confidence mm -hmm. meaning when you're non-confident that's what you're going to get a disaster <laughs> you know so I like the freshness of that approach, and I see that in your video too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, there, there were actually there were many comments that I could have said. Well, uh, okay. I have to say quickly about that. You know that um, what you said about Mike. Uh, I also had that noticed that you know like that like what Zappa had, for example, the darkness that he had. Like Mike, Mike that thought Mike is totally lacking that. Well, uh, the, the, now that's an interesting point. And this is, it's all subjective, obviously, to your, your perspective. And Frank, there was a, there, 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 there was a, um, and he, he could fabricate ugliness, but he was never, there was, there's never real evil or, you know, there could be a darkness in a sense. But even when Frank wrote his most darkest music, it just there was always still that affinity for the bizarre playfulness in it even if he's singing dumb all over you know something like that it, it's 
There's not. That's not evil. Frank had. He couldn't do that. Um, yeah. Well, I was just going to say that. Well, uh, we had to, just just a week ago. We had one like a panel discussion about creativity, and that's. Uh, mm. We talked about that. Well, like whether like well, I had the the question whether whether adulthood like kills creativity. A what? Adulthood cre kills creativity, and that that somehow you know. And there was one one group, the performance group. They just laughed about it that they had just made a, you know like a huge well like a, well a production. To, they had applied for money and everything so that they get to play for like fifteen minutes to 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 be playful for fifteen minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said to them that actually that's that's funny that even when when making art it doesn't even mean that you know that you get to be playful automatically because they as as we talked that that it gets so serious. Well, it's not that adulthood kills creativity. People going through life who allow themselves to be conditioned by the limitations, fear, and demands of others allow their true unique creativity to diminish because they believe that they either don't fit in or that they have to placate the desires of somebody else so you adulthood can be a blossoming of your creativity a continuing evolution deeply into more and more and deeper creativity and the only one that can ever diminish it is you by your perspective of yourself and the world around you there's nothing in the outside world that can do that to you. That's 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 something that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. They believe that there's things in the outside world that can stop them. It's kind of like when you start to play the role and you take the script from the outside world. Then you, well, it's, bit it's, by bit, you you are yeah. so deep in that role that you it, it seems like you can't. Yeah, but the the outside world that. is completely relative to your yeah. perspective of it. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, the way that people see things, the way that they choose to see them, mm -hmm. is a reflection of. The way they see themselves, it, it cannot be any other way. It just can't be. It's very obvious, but it, it's not obvious, you know, because we feel it's not uncommon for people to create a victim mentality yeah. in their mind, uh, you know, and they don't know they're doing it. They believe that things in the past that happened to them uh, can stop them from doing anything now. Now, of course, I'm not referring to if you wanted to be a great guitar player and you got into a terrible car accident and you lost your arms, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to find something else. But it's not, it doesn't mean that there's not something else, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, so it's easy to limit yourself, but the, you, you're the only one that can do that. Yeah. You really are. You're the sure. only one. And I, it's interesting when I hear... People, because um, I do, I, I mean, I only know this because I've, I do it. I've seen myself do it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, my um, focus in life, my main focus, is to be vigilant with the observation of the quality of the thoughts that I'm thinking. It's very difficult, very slippery slope. Because fear <laughs> has a tendency to make you blind to even recognizing the quality of your own thinking. Mm -hmm. And the quality of your thinking paints the picture of the world you see. It's not out there. Yeah. What's out there is completely relative. Oh, well, what do you mean? There's wars going on and there's, and there's <laughs> this going on. So has has that changed? You know, mm -hmm. there's there's always 
there's always things that you can focus on that are going on out there and use them as excuses yeah. for the way you feel now. This is the prison that uh, many people, and I, I know this because I, I, I do it, I've done it, uh, they, they, they limit themselves. So when you start recognizing that you're doing that, not anybody else, not your parents, not your teachers, not the government, not the religions, not the psychopaths that you believe are doing this or not this or you know not the things that are killing your creativity as you get into an, an adult, you know, that's a perspective. It's not a truth, you know. So uh, what I try to do is see is see within my own self when I'm limiting my beliefs about myself. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not referring to an arrogant confidence that I can do anything. You know, it's not that. It, I'm talking about the appreciation that you can find for yourself and others. You, 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 yeah. you can't feel differently about others than you feel about yourself. Yeah. But that's unrecognizable to most people. Yeah, that's true. And I think one, one of the traps is like, when you're younger, you have this huge urge to prove yourself. And this process of proving yourself kind of makes you blind to who you really are. Because you're kind of, yeah. that's what I meant by, by this role. But when, like, for example, getting older and you feel you don't need to prove yourself anymore. And you, that can open up oh, so very, many yes, like, because opportunities. What, because it's like, absolutely, I totally agree. And, and the recognition that you don't need to prove yourself anymore. What, another way of saying it is, I don't need to feel like I need to stack up to other people what they're doing or how they f think that I should be doing something. You know, like we, we allow ourselves to believe that we need to fit in. That's what, one of the things I love about Mike. He can't fit in. Do you know what I mean? He, he doesn't have that and he, do and he doesn't want it. And he shouldn't have the fitting in or else the, 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 what, what, he wouldn't have that uniqueness. You know what I mean? And I like that aspect about your video too. I could, you know, I could watch videos that have million dollar budgets and have all sorts of creative effects. Um, but it's, it's nice when somebody just decides, this is what I have, this is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna enjoy it, and the end, you know, so. Yeah, there's also one, one thing, what you said about that, you know, like that, uh... You know that there are. I know there's a lot of people who want to plan everything exactly how it is, but I also think that well that one that uh, I read in some of your interviews we have talked about that you have to be connected to the universe. I think well you know because one thing is if you really plan everything like ready, you somehow you become blind for what 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 is for what is around you. That's yeah. like that's what I've noticed in in the shootings. I don't make a storyboard because I want to see what is around there right but also it could be in life that if you just if you go like you know just like in a tunnel you well know. you can cut yourself off of even better things than you could have expected do you know what I mean mm -hmm. because a lot of this is also where fear comes from it's the belief that it's the belief that you have to control things now planning and creating goals that's fine you know but rolling with the you know with the wave of things you know being connected to the universe so what does that mean connected to the universe well i believe that what that means is you you need to get out of the way of the natural flow of your own unique creativity that wants to come out you know everybody's unique this is obvious uh, everybody is unique and everybody is creative you they can you can you can block off your creativity until it's a little trickle but you can't shut it off it, it's impossible so uh, when you allow your true uniqueness yourself to flow into your creativity you're connecting with the universe
Do you know what I mean? You're being present. You're in the moment of, of, of what um, is needed. You're in the moment of the cooperative components that come together at the right time, not when you demand them to be, because mm -hmm. th it, it usually doesn't work like that. And when you are in a state of um, struggle, a state of like like you're fighting to to do something, or you um, are blaming mm -hmm. others for something, you know, or judging, you know, or b b being overly critical. That's just various faces of fear, you know, and that's how you disconnect yourself from the universe. So the you you are the universe, <laughs> you know, and and um, when when a a person is able to find their confidence isn't really the right word, uh, find their authentic personality. Your authentic personality makes no excuses for who you are and what you like and what you want to do, what you don't want to do, the kind of food you like, the clothes you like, the sex you like, the, the kinds of creative things you like to do. It makes no excuses, but it's, it's, it's extraordinarily wholesome also because it's freedom. When you have freedom, when you know your own freedom, you don't, you have no, you, you respect the freedom of others, you know, you have no desire to blame or, you know, criticize. And um, I believe this is our natural state, you know, to actually be creative uh, in the moment uh, with your own unique creativity. And the, you know, the, the difficulty is we get conditioned. So when you said adulthood could... Um, just okay, kill creativity. Yeah. 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 It, it's not adulthood yeah. that does that. Yeah. It's the allowing, it's you allowing the world, the fear of the world to um, condition your belief system because when your belief system has fear in it all bets are off on any true fresh new unique creativity coming through you <laughs> well yeah, actually it, Nico doesn't have that problem <laughs> yeah. I noticed <laughs> I noticed I yeah, saw yeah, it in your yeah, video yeah, yeah yeah well actually I'm it's like it's more like a question in the in the well I didn't say that but I just it's kind of a start starting question and we're like uh, well I told one uh, uh, example when, when my daughter was like a year and a half it was spring and then we were walking outside and then she saw a sled like leaning on the on the wall and the snow had just, just melted and she just like pointed at it, ah, ah, let's take that and i was going to say no but then wait a minute what are you going to say yeah okay yes let's take that yeah That's yeah, nice. yeah yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Then, and that was kind of a you know moment of revelation. Now she's now she's just started in art, art school and like you know and she's you know a fifteen year old teenager somehow very open open like you know much more open than yeah. teenagers usually. So it's like a yeah really it's yeah there's a lot of those ex well, expectations and everything like that, that can really like mess you up <laughs> somehow. Well, it's it's Ooh, don't you love that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we don't realize how um, vulnerable uh, a, ch a child is in their learning process. Everybody is always teaching and learning. And you, you can teach fear, you can teach joy. And that's what you're teaching a child. You're either teaching fear or joy. There's actually no neutral. There's nothing neutral. Sometimes it, impatience, that, that's, that, but that's okay. It's okay to be impatient. That's a form of fear, mm. you know? And you teach it when you are it, you know? And when you stopped and you said, yes, let's play with the sled, you know? Yeah. You were teaching joy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I, I also I, I've done teaching, so I've, I've realized it. Like I've remembered something that I there are some things that I've rem remembered from that when I was like eight years old and teach them something at school and it, it you know mm -hmm. you remember it it, it it becomes a truth and i realized that that's a that's a great responsibility really and uh, I, I would also bring it to you know like uh making music videos it's also well like what jay warner said about the short films he said that now he like those like those songs open up totally differently to him and i think it's also well making any art well but if especially if you're like making for someone else that you like you really have to respect the, the like re respect the music and because, it, because because you can really like control how people receive it mm. and that's that's guy i feel it's a really great responsibility also well it's a responsibility you I, I i it is a responsibility but i think a greater responsibility is following your instincts to the people and the uh, the projects that resonate with you. It was kind of like, uh, kind of like when when you said, "Okay, let's go play with the sled." You know, there was something that said, "Yeah," right. So when you, uh, I would assume that when you listen to, and it's very interesting because when I see your video and I hear Mike's music, it's like obviously there's a that you you are guys are connected there. There's a, a beautiful kind of co-creativity that works with it. It, it works with Mike's uh, creativity. So there must have been, at some point, something in you that went, oh yeah, I'm gonna work on Keneally's. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna spend a year creating something around this man's music. Why? because the cooperative components came together at the right time. And I can, uh, that's one thing that I recognize. So you're right at the right time. That was Keneally. <laughs> uh, I recognize that uh, why you were attracted to his music, because the video is, it works. So when a person can navigate their life trusting those instincts um, that you have a good life you know mm. yeah well one thing about which in a nutshell could be like like in lana there's that uh there's the line that wave stream wave at the stars and i was just thinking i wanted to i was planning to make a facebook update about that like that, that i'm so happy to make it make it video for a song that has that set that kind of line yeah but then i also that actually i'm very happy that such things still make me happy yeah you, yeah <laughs> yeah because your inner being your, your your authentic personality it 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 resonates at a very high joyful level and when we allow that you you're, you're going to be attracted to those things and even uh, people who are attracted to intense things there is a there there can be a um you know there's a, there's a power in that you know like i remember uh well for like a metal musician or somebody there's an energy in that and they can be you know gah, 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 and that's their joy in a sense you know i'm not referring to people who are creating out of their pain many people believe that I work out my um, my suffering by getting it out through my art. What you're actually doing is exacerbating it and continuing to give yourself the evidence of your own misery. Mm -hmm. And it will perpetuate itself and evolve into all sorts of things. You know, but even that has its place because suffering, uh, it, well, the ego, you know, that's the ego. It, it has a built-in self-destruct mechanism and that's deep suffering. That's an Eckhart Tolle quote, by the way. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I always remember it. Um, allowance of the world to be. You, you forgive the world. 
it's insanity and it's you know and and when you do that you you you, you forgive yourself of of the limitations and the the the, the um the belief that you need to be different in order to make somebody else happy. So, so it's... Yeah, that is liberating. Uh, the ego doesn't like that. Matter of fact, the ego is the thing that feels like it needs to be right all the time. Mm -hmm. And actually, to be proven wrong is like a death. It feels like death to the ego. And it will defend that. It will defend being right uh, in any situation if it if it's proven wrong it will make excuses as to why and um, it'll fight to the death and that's what war is it's it's egos needing to be right yeah.